Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We'll be creating this abstract cloth effect in Cinema 4D. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's get straight to it, shall we? Let's start by coming up here and grabbing a sphere. If we come up to display and turn our lines on, you'll see that this is just a normal old sphere with fairly uneven geometry. We've got the poles at the top here. We're gonna be doing some simulations, so we want nice even geometry. So let's come down here and change the type to icosahedron. And that's gonna give us these nice evenly spaced triangles and make our simulation work a lot better. We want enough geometry in there to give us some nice details. So let's come down here and crank the segments up to 120. Right, that should work nicely. Let's come up here and turn those lines off for now. Then we'll come down to our material palette here. And if we double click, we'll make a new material. So open that up. We'll turn off color. We want this to be nice and reflective. So we'll switch this over to Beckman. Bring that roughness down, reflection right up and specular off. And let's drag that on. Looking cool. And finally, let's right click on our sphere and come down to make editable. So now that's a single piece of geometry ready for some simulation. Let's start by bringing in some forces to affect our simulation. So up here under simulate and particles, we'll grab a wind. Let's bring that wind speed up to 26 and the turbulence to 20. Then over in the coordinates tab, let's put him negative 200 in the Z axis. All right, let's just position that up. Cool. Now we need to come back up to simulate. This time we'll grab a turbulence. And down here under the object tab, we want to put the strength up to 500 and the scale to 85. Okay, so I'm going to show you two ways to set this up. The first one's going to be with our old friend, the cloth tag. So let's come up and grab our sphere. And under tags, we'll come down to simulation tags and we'll grab a cloth tag. Okay, let's see what that does straight out of the box. We'll come down, hit play. And you can see our wind and turbulence is affecting it, which looks cool, but it's falling down out of the frame. We want it to stay in place. So let's go back into our tag under the forces tab and see what's going on. Right, I think this gravity is the culprit. Let's set that to zero. We don't want it being pulled downward. And while we're here, we can probably get rid of this wind and turbulence. We've already got some of those in our scene. Let's set these all to zero. Right, let's hit play and see what we've got. So it's not falling down with the gravity anymore, but it's getting pushed pretty hard by that wind. We want that wind to deform the geometry, but not push everything over to the side. Let's give ourselves a few more frames to play with. 500 should be good. And we'll drag this out. And a little trick I found to help keep our cloth in place is if we come over here, this guy right here, drag, we'll crank that right up to 100 and that should do it. Okay, it's staying in place. And actually, let's make another material and plonk that on there so we can see this a bit better. If we zoom in, you'll start to notice some of the drawbacks of doing it this way. One, it's very slow to simulate. And if we come up and add a subdivision surface, it's gonna get even slower. You'll probably find it's a little bit hard to art direct this as well. And if we fast forward this preview a little bit, you'll see that most of the time it ends up collapsing in on itself, which is not so cool. Let's rewind that. You could always go back into our tag and play around with some of these settings. Let's try bringing the friction and flexion up to 90% and we'll drop those iterations to 20. And hit play. Now that's a bit more of an interesting animation, but if we fast forward again, you'll see that eventually it collapses on itself again. So that's one way of doing it anyway. But let me show you my new favorite way of doing this. Let's go up here and grab this and holding control, we'll just duplicate out another one and turn that one off and rename it V1. And here's our new V2. Let's move that guy out of the way. And we can get rid of this cloth tag, just delete that. So this time, instead of a cloth tag, we're gonna use a deformer. Let's go up here and we'll grab the jiggle deformer. Don't forget to hold shift when you click that so it becomes a child of our sphere. So it turns out we can use our forces on our jiggle deformer. If you have a look at the forces tab, we just need to drag them into here. So let's grab our wind and our turbulence and chuck them there. 
and we'll give that a play. And straight away, I think this is giving us a much better result. You can see loads more detail in there. It really looks like folding fabric. And best of all, if we speed this preview up a bit, you'll see that it keeps its form way better and it's not collapsing in on itself. And because this is a deformer and not a simulated cloth, it's calculating way faster. If these little folds here are a bit too much for you, I'll show you a really nice way to smooth this out. Let's rewind and we'll come up to our deformers again and bring in a smoothing deformer. Let's drag that guy under our jiggle in the hierarchy and let's have a look what that does. Right, it's a bit too smooth for my liking. But if we come over here and change the type from smooth to relax, that's looking interesting. We'll rewind this. We need to hit initialize first for this to work correctly. And if we hit play, you can see that's keeping a lot of the detail in there, but it's smoothing it out. And if we have a look before and after, I think it's looking pretty cool. I'm liking the way that's moving. Let's have another look at before and after. Nice. We could also tweak some of these settings to get a different look. Let's bring that stiffness way down, turn up those iterations and hit initialize again. Cool. And that's pretty much the effect. Let's have one more before and after. All right. And that concludes today's tutorial. You could also put that glossy material back on and go crazy with this effect. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. So as usual, if you want to save a bit of time, you can download the project file below and you can find loads of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.